So today, this is going to cover chapter 10, lesson three, and we're gonna learn about hyperbolas today. So on the first screen here, or slide, it's got the definition, and then it's got two standard forms for the equations of the hyperbola. Both of these standard form equations are for when the center is at the origin at zero zero. Now, uh, let me just show you some key differences between this and the ellipse. Now, notice in the ellipse equation, what we had in the ellipse was this sign that's in between was a plus sign. So now in the hyperbola, it's always going to be a subtraction sign. And before, what changed was the a squared and the b squared. Now for the hyperbolas, the a squared and the b squared, they stay in the same spot. What moves in the hyperbola and switches places are the x squared and the y squared. So these are key differences. The a squared is always going to be first. It's under the first fraction always. So again, what's switching is the place of the x squared and the y squared. Now, this first letter that you see on the top of the fraction, this is going to tell you which axis your hyperbola is gonna touch or transverse. So notice over here, notice when I made my graph, it's touching the x-axis because that's what letter is first. Over here, what's first is the y squared and notice my graph crosses or touches the y-axis. Now, what we're gonna be doing here is notice these dotted lines here in my graph. These are asymptotes. So we're going to be finding the asymptotes and those are gonna be like our guidelines or our boundaries um, and how we're gonna shape our C's or our backward C's or our U's or upside down U's. So all we're gonna really do is find the equation of the asymptote, the vertices, and then we're gonna use those asymptotes to guide us. We're not gonna to need to look for additional points on our hyperbola. Once we find the asymptote equations and make that X, then those are gonna be our guidelines or our boundaries for our graph. So let's go ahead and try some of these. Oh, another key difference is notice here in order to find the focus points, the foci, we're also gonna be graphing those. It's gonna be c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Notice this time it changes to a plus sign. So really what's happening here is the plus and the minus sign are switching places. When it's in the ellipse, the plus sign is in the standard form of the equation and the minus sign is in this thing. And then for the hyperbola, the subtraction sign is in the equation, but the addition sign is in this c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Notice again, just like before, the equation has to be set equal to one. So let's try our first example. So here is the first example. Oh no, this one's still just the standard form, sorry. This is still the same thing that I just said on the previous screen. The only difference is I hand wrote it. So here are the two standard forms. This would be the one where it touches, your graph touches the x-axis. And then this is the one where the y squared's first, so it touches the y-axis. Notice that the a squared or the a is always first. And remember to find your focus point we're using c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Now, one other thing I didn't talk about on the previous slide is how you're going to be finding the equation for your asymptotes. The asymptotes, when it touches the x-axis, when the x squared is first, it's gonna be y equals plus or minus b over a. When the y squared is first, then it's gonna be y equals plus or minus a over b. So you'd have to, you're gonna square root that a squared and b squared to get the a and the b value. So when we do these problems, 
we're going to be graphing the center we're going to be graphing the asymptotes we're going to graph the vertices we're going to graph the foci and then you're gonna draw your graph and it's gonna be, um, I guess, graphed along the asymptotes. And you're gonna see what I, what I mean by all these things. So we're gonna do the center, the asymptotes, which are gonna be lines, the vertices, the focus, or the foci, and then we're gonna draw our U-shapes or our C shapes, um, whether they're backwards or upside down, um, based off of the asymptotes. So let's try our first example now. So again, remember your equation always has to be set equal to one. Now, key thing, if you are taking a multiple choice test on this and it asks you to find the standard form of any of these, know that they always have to be, for at least the ellipse and the hyperbola, Remember, it always has to be set equal to one. So if you see something like this and it says write the standard form, this wouldn't be in the correct format because it equals 16. So the first thing I need to do is set my equation equal to one by dividing everything by 16. So then now I can reduce the first fraction. Four over 16 simplifies to 1 fourth. So this is gonna just be x squared over four. Remember, the hyperbola has a subtraction sign. So this would be another key thing to look for. If they're saying, write the equation of the hyperbola and you see a plus sign, know that that would be an, an equation of an ellipse. So then now this one can't be simplified. So I'm gonna leave it alone. And then 16 over 16 is one. So this is my standard form. Notice there's nothing being added or subtracted to my x squared or y squared. So this tells me automatically that my center is going to be at the origin. So again, if you don't see anything being added or subtracted to those numerators, that tells you that your center is at the origin. Next thing I need to do is realize which axis it's going to be touching. So notice I see an x squared as my first variable, my first numerator of my first fraction. So this tells me that it is going to touch, it's going to be on the x-axis, or it's going to touch the x-axis. So um, let's go ahead and work this out. So I'm going to first find out what my a squared is. My a squared equals 4. To figure out what a is, for my asymptotes, I have to square root it. So a equals two, actually plus and minus. And then b squared, that's gonna be the 16. So b equals plus and minus four. Next thing I need to do is use my c squared equals a squared plus b squared to help me get my focus or what I'm gonna be adding to the center to get my two fo to get my focus point or fo foci. So let me put in my a squared, which is four, my b squared, which is 16. I'm going to add them. C is equal to plus and minus the square root of 20. I need to simplify the square root of 20. I could break it down into four times five. You could also do two times 10. Um, this is automatically going to tell me it's going to be plus and minus, uh, it's going to be 2 root 5. So C is equal to plus and minus 2 square root 5. Now, this is what I'm going to be adding to my center point to get my focus. And then I'm going to take that A value and add it to the center to get my vertices. All right. I had to let Charlie in. Everybody's here. Let me quick send. Did I log in? Hold on. Um, 
me send this to Mrs. Pierce. Okay, back to the notes. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to find my vertices. So what I'm going to do is take my center point, which was the zero, zero, and then the axis, or the first letter that I see here, that's what I'm gonna add and subtract my A value. So my two vertices are gonna occur at negative two comma zero and positive two comma zero. So these are the vertices. I also need to find the focus points. So for my focus points, I'm gonna take this to root five, and again, I'm gonna add and subtract it to the center. Again, the focus point is always on the same axis that your vertices are, so I'm gonna add and subtract to root five to the x of the center. So my focus point is negative two root five, comma zero, and positive two root five, comma zero. So now, I also need to find the equations for my asymptotes. So that's what's new here. Go ahead and highlight this. So these are the two focus points that I'm gonna put on the graph. So now, my asymptotes, remember when the x squared, well, let me do this in black. So this is gonna be the work for the asymptotes. So when the x squared is first, then what we're gonna be doing is the equation is going to be y equals plus or minus b over a x. Sort of think when we go to graph these, this equation is in slope intercept, y equals mx plus b form. But notice there's no b, you're gonna put the first point at zero, zero. Now, I'm gonna come up here to get my a and my b values. So y equals plus and minus, the b is four, the a is two, four over two x, I can simplify this to plus and minus two x, because four divided by two is two. All right, now that I have all of my pieces, I've got my asymptotes here, I can now graph these three things, the blue, the green, and the red. So let me go ahead and put them all on the graph. Let me graph my vertices first. So I have one here at negative two comma zero, positive two comma zero, that's a vertice. Next thing I could do is graph my focus points. So again, if you weren't using a calculator, you would approximate the square root of five, but you've got the benefit of your calculator. So I'm gonna do two times the square root of five, or two square root five, and I get 4.47. I'm gonna round it to 4.5. So I'm gonna graph negative 4.5 comma zero just to get an idea of where it is. But if it asks you to list the focus points, you're gonna list them in simplest radical form. I'm gonna graph these two points. So let me add some tick marks here. Three, four, three, four. So I'll put a focus point here and here, so that's an F. Next I have to graph my asymptotes because my asymptotes are gonna guide how my letter C and backwards C look. So again, we're thinking of this as y equals mx plus b. So I'm gonna be graphing y equals 2x and y equals negative 2x. So I'm gonna split and make draw two straight lines or two diagonal lines. So when it's in this form, y equals mx plus b, notice there's no b here. So I'm gonna start at zero, zero. And then I'm gonna move my slope because this is my slope. So I'm gonna rise two and run one. So I'm gonna go ahead and graph these lines. So I'm gonna put a point here, 
And I'm gonna actually do this in highlight because it's gonna be like a guide. So I'm gonna graph. I'm gonna rise to run one. Rise, I could keep doing it. So here is one asymptote. And then I'll go in the other direction. This is negative. So I'm going to negative 2 over 1. So still rise and run. So when it's negative, I'm going to go down and I'm going to go left. Here I'm going up and right. I'm writing this arrow backwards. The negative, I'm going to go left. Here I'm going to go right. So down and over here let me connect the dots there are your asymptotes so now what we're going to do is we're going to use those as like walls of where we want our graph of our, our hyperbola to go so over here is my vertices so i'm going to take it and i'm going to guide it along the asymptotes. So the red lines are like walls that tell us how we're gonna make either. So when it touches the x-axis, we're gonna be graphing a backward C and a regular C. When it touches the y-axis, it's gonna be a U and an upside down U. So what you need to calculate is you need to find your equations for your asymptotes. You need to find the coordinates of the vertices, the coordinates of the focus points. Once you get those three pieces, then you're gonna graph those things in there. And then when you go to make your uh, hyperbolas, just use the asymptotes as guides. You don't need to do calculations and find additional points on the hyperbola, like we had to do for the parabola. All right, you guys can see example two with no work here yet? Yes, okay, perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and try this. Okay, so again, your equation must be set equal to one. So I need to divide everything by 100. So then the first fraction, 25 over 100, simplifies to 1 fourth. 4 over 100 simplifies to 1 25th. And then the 100 over the 100 is the 1. All right, so now notice the variable that I'm seeing first is the y squared. So this tells me it's going to touch the y-axis. So this tells me it's gonna be a U and an upside down U. Notice there's nothing being added or subtracted to my X squared, Y squared. So this tells me my center is at the origin. There's no H and K or my H and K is zero, zero. Again, remember A squared is always first. So A squared equals four. So A, is gonna equal plus and minus two. And then my B squared is the 25. So B equals plus and minus five. I now need to take the C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Plug in A squared and B squared, I need to find my C value. So again, A squared is four, B squared 25. I'm gonna add them square root it, 29 can't be broken down, so I'm gonna leave it as square root of 29. Next, I need to find, now I can turn all these into coordinates and then I'll find my asymptotes. Okay, so for the vertices, again, you're gonna take your center point and you're gonna add your A value to this first variable. So it was Y, so I'm gonna add and subtract two to the y. So I have a vertice at zero comma negative two and zero comma positive two. For the focus points, 
Again, I'm going to take my C value, add and subtract it to the same variable you did for the vertices. So I'm going to add it to the Y. So I get 0 comma negative square root 29 and 0 comma positive square root 29. Now I need to find the equations for my asymptotes. So this time the y squared is first. So when the y squared is first, we use y equals plus or minus a over bx. So my a value was 2, my b value is 5, so plus or minus 2 fifths x. So again, we have an asymptote here at negative 2 over 5x and positive 2 over 5x. Remember this 2 fifths, this is your slope. My y-intercept, there's no b, so I start at 0, 0. Okay, now that I have everything that I need, now I can go ahead and put all of this on my graph. So again, I can approximate, if I wasn't using my calculator, the square root of 29. It's in between 25 and 36, so 5 and 6, so the square root of 29 is about, uh, we're going to say 5.4. Okay, so when I go to graph the focus points, I'm going to be graphing 0 comma negative 5.4 and 0 comma positive 5.4. All right, so let me get the vertices on the graph first. Again, remember this is touching the, the y-axis. So let me add another tick mark here. And I also need to get it up to five. So three, four, five, six. Three, four, five, six. Add a few more marks. Okay, so my vertices, I have one here. And I have one here. These are my vertices. I can graph my focus points. So put it like right about there. And then now I'm going to graph my asymptotes. So I'll just use my line instead of my highlighter. So I start here at 0, 0, 0. So for the first one, I'm going to be graphing 2 over 5x. So from 0, 0, I'm rising 2, and I'm running 5. So I'm going to go up 2 and to the right 5. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So my first point will go here. I could also go in the other direction just to get another point. I could put another point here. Let me go ahead and connect them. So this is this first asymptote. And now I need to graph the negative asymptote. So I'm going to be graphing y equals negative 2 fifths x. So this time I'm going to go down and then to the right or up and left. Connect your points. Okay, um, connect my points to draw my line. All right, so now this is sort of going to be a fatter graph. So I'll now connect, or I start here at my vertice, the blue dots, and now I just make my U shape. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. We're just using these asymptotes as a guide. So key things you can look for, especially if it's a multiple choice test, is if you see the y squared first, then that should tell you you're looking for a graph that looks like a u and an upside down u. If you have the x squared first, know you're looking for a graph that's got the c and the backwards c. So become familiar with the characteristics 
and how you can match the, the graphs to the equations. Pretty good on example two. All right, now we're gonna do it where the center is not at zero, zero. It's at a different order pair. And again, that order pair will be H and K. So here is the standard forms. Now, they're a little bit more complicated. So notice this time, we're bringing in our center point at HK. Notice our asymptote equations. These are, if you remember, point slope. These are the point slope form of the equation. Now again, you would look at the top here. So you can see that the x squared is in the first fraction. So this is gonna cross or touch the x-axis. This one has the y as the top of the first fraction. So this would cross the y-axis. Now this x1 and y1, this is gonna be your h and k. So this will be k. This will be H. So this is what we're gonna plug in to our asymptote. Because remember before, our, our uh, H and K was zero, zero. So let's try an example. Here to 13, oops, too far. Here's our first example. Notice it's already set for me. Notice it's already equaling one, so I don't need to adjust anything. Now, remember, this, what goes with y is always the k, what goes with x is always the h. So I need to pull out my center point. And again, it's backwards of what you would think. So my h is negative three and my k is negative two. That is my center point. Notice the first variable or the top of the first fraction is the y. So this tells me it's gonna be vertical or it's gonna be the U and the upside down U. This is what my graph should finally look like. So let's go ahead and figure out what A squared is. Again, A squared is always the first denominator. So A squared is nine. So A equals plus and minus three when I square root it. My B squared is the four. So B equals plus and minus two. Let's find C. So let's do c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So plug it in. a squared is 9. b squared is 4. c squared equals 13. Square root it plus and minus the square root of 13. Now here, I can't break 13 down, so I'm going to leave it alone. So now let's go ahead and find the vertices. Remember we take the center and we're gonna add and subtract this A value to the variable that we see first. So I'm gonna be adding and subtracting three to the Y of my center. So my first vertice is gonna be negative three so I could do negative two minus three. So I'm doing negative two minus three, and I get negative five. And then I'll do negative two plus three, so I get positive one. So these are my two vertices. I now need to do the same thing for the focus. Take your center. And again, you're gonna add and subtract the square root of 13 to the y. So again, we're just gonna leave it in simplest radical form. So we have an order pair at negative three, and then we'll do negative two minus root 13, negative three, and then we'll do plus root 13. Now, just to give you an idea of where negative two so like where this is located, I can go ahead and figure out what this is. So the square root of 13, again, you could approximate it. So nine and 16 
are the two perfect squares on either side. So it's going to be between 3 and 4. So when I square root 13, the, the square root of 13 is about 3.6. So I need to do 3.6, um, so it'll be negative. So I'll be doing this problem. And then I'll also be doing negative 2 plus 3.6. So this will be 1.6, and this will be negative 5.6. These are going to be the two places that I'm going to approximate where my focus is. Here, let me just write them here. So this will be negative 3 comma negative 5.6, negative 3 comma 1.6. All right, now I need to get my equations for my asymptotes. So remember, these are a little bit longer. So we're going to be plugging it into this equation, y minus y1 and equals plus or minus a over b x minus x1. So let's plug it in. So again, this is my k, this is my h. So I'm going to get y minus negative, minus negative 2, so it'll be y plus 2 plus or minus 3 over 2, and then x plus 3. Now, what I'm going to do is, instead of distributing this and getting this into slope-intercept form, all I need to do is graph this center point and then move this slope from that center point. So I'm going to go ahead and graph negative 3, negative 2, And now I'm just going to move the slope, and I'm going to graph a negative slope and also a positive slope. So from the center, I'm going to rise 3 and run 2. And then same thing here, but I'll go in the other direction. So I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and then over 2. So I could put a point there. I could also go down three, one, and then maybe put it there. So here's an asymptote. I'm gonna go in the other direction. Rise three, run two over here. Go down three, over two. Make my other asymptote. Let me do it in the highlight. So these are my asymptotes. I'm gonna graph the vertices. So negative 3, negative 5, add some marks, 4, 5, so 3 and negative 5, that's a vertice. And then I'm also going to graph negative 3, positive 1, that's another vertice. And now I use the guidelines of the asymptotes to make my U and my upside down U. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, next I need to add in the focus points. So I had said that this is approximately where they are. So negative 5.6. So really close to that vertice. And then over here, same distance. So 1.6, really close. So those are the focus. So again, don't worry about taking this equation and distributing it and make it into slope-intercept. You can leave it in point-slope. Just again, remember, take your center and then move your slope from the center. Let's try one more example. So here is our first example. No. Now again, you don't need to do anything here. It's already set in the correct form. It equals one. So let me go ahead and pull out my H and K. So again, my center is going to be at the order pair three comma two. Notice this fraction, this first term doesn't have a fraction. I can put a one there. So this tells me that my A squared term equals one. 
So A equals plus and minus 1. My B squared is 9, so B equals plus and minus 3. To find the C value, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. C squared equals, my A squared is 1, my B squared is 9, C squared equals 10, so C equals plus and minus square root 10. I can't break it down. So now let's find, let's just do the focus since we're over here. Take your center, 3 comma 2. Notice the first variable is x, so this is where I'm adding the square root of 10. So it's going to be 3 minus square root 10 comma 2 and 3 plus square root 10 comma 2. Those are your two focus points. And then for the two vertices, again take the center, add and subtract the 1 to the x. So I'm really doing 3 minus 1, so 2 comma 2, and then I'll do 3 plus 1, so 4 comma 2. Those are the two vertices. I didn't label it, so let me just write the word vertice. All right, now I need to do the asymptotes. So again, y minus y1, and then this time it's going to be plus or minus a over b. I'm sorry, b over a, sorry. So when your x squared is first, we know that it's going to be b over a. Again, you need to memorize this or have it written down somewhere. Again, remember your x1, y1 is the hk. So let me go ahead and plug it in. So y minus 2 equals plus or minus. My b is 3, my a is 1, and my h is 3. I can simplify 3 over 1 or I can leave it because again slope is rise over run. So again I'm going to take my center point and from this center I'm going to move the 3 over 1. Rise 3 and run 1. And again I'm going to do both plus and minus slope. So let's go ahead and get these pieces on here. I can put my vertices on here. 2, 2. 4, 2. 3, 2. Now again, remember when the x squared is first, it's touching the x-axis. I could also quick get my focus points on here. So again, if you think about the square root of 10, it's in between these two perfect squares, 3 and 4. So I'll say square root of 10 is about 3.2. So when I go to graph this, I'm going to be graphing 3 minus 3.2 and 3 plus 3.2. So I'm going to be graphing here negative. Let's go ahead and graph. I'll put, let me go ahead and graph these asymptotes. So over here, this one, so 3 minus 3.2 gives me negative 0 0.2 comma 2. And then this one's going to give me, when I add it, about 6.2 comma 2. So let's go ahead and get these on here. So negative 0.2 comma 2, I could put a focus point here, and then over here I need to go out a little bit more, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I can put another focus point over here. And then now let me go ahead and graph the asymptotes. So I'm gonna graph the center, which is at one, two, three, two. Here's the center. And then from there, I'm gonna rise three and run one. So one, two, three, and over one. I could also go down one, two, three, and over one. Got too many red dots here. All right, so let me connect the, that asymptote. Then I'll go in the other direction. Rise three, run one. Put a dot there. Put another one over here. Connect the asymptote dots or points. That's a little off, let me fix that. right there. And then now we'll add in our backward C and our forward C. So again, just use the guidelines of the asymptotes. And there is your graph of your hyperbola. Mark is on the next slide. I know I went one minute over. So this is due on Wednesday, 11 through 21 odd.